I want you to hit me as hard as you can. This two-time Oscar nominee is considered an indie darling and a box office queen. When watching a Naomi Watts film, you find yourself mesmerized by her talent. There are moments when you think she is gonna pop right out of the screen, like that creepy girl from The Ring, but less violent. She is one of the most reliable actresses out there. You know that no matter what the movie is, Naomi Watts is going to turn in a stellar performance. For a while, it seemed like Miss Watts was on the fast track to becoming the biggest film actress ever. Deservingly so, but some people feel that she never really quite reached her potential. The life and career of Naomi Watts is actually kind of similar to that of her character in King Kong. A young, talented actress looking for adventure, and boy, did she get a lot of it. Maybe a little more than she could handle? And after that mighty adventure fell and crashed, she eventually moved on and did her own thing, finding true happiness there. For once, I would just love to phone it in and play a two-dimensional girl in a rom-com with no inner life of her own. Ha <laughs> ha, you said words. Recently, the Daily Beast wrote an article that just so happens to be called WTF Happened to Naomi Watts. And in this article, the writer claims that Naomi Watts' talent has been wasted in recent years and was incredibly disappointed that she was only the quote, lame love interest in her most recent film, Boss Level. But I hear it's a pretty badass flick, so uh, I don't know. The Daily Beast goes on to say that Miss Watts plays the quote, disrespected female character and that she deserves better. But what is better? Maybe she's exploring genres. Maybe she's trying something new as an artiste. And you know what? Not everything can be Mulholland Drive, The Impossible, 21 Grams, or Birdman. So is the Daily Beast right? Does she deserve better? Or is she right where she wants to be at this point in her life and career? But yeah, we have so many questions like, how did she get so talented? What of her films are the best? And what of her films are the worst? But yeah, I guess we should be asking the same thing as that beast who is daily, but we mean it in the most respectful way possible. What the f happened to Naomi Watts? Good, good, good. And now the opposite of that, go. <laughs> I just want to take this time to say thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell to get those notifications for future content. Now, back to the show. But to truly understand what the f happened to Naomi Watts, we must start at the beginning. And the beginning began when she was born on her birthday, England, 1968. Her father was a road manager and sound engineer for Pink Floyd. He passed away when Naomi was only seven. And although we think of Naomi Watts as an Australian actress, she didn't move there until she was 14 years old. So there. Watts's rise to fame was not immediate. Her first film was a very small supporting role in Her Love Alone in 1986. And thanks to her friendship with Nicole Kidman, Watts was next cast in a supporting role in the 1991 film Flirting. 1991 would also see Naomi Watts appear in the highly acclaimed miniseries Brides of Christ, which was the most watched drama ever produced by ABC at the time. She would do the Australian soap opera thing in Home and Away. She would also get a very small role in the film Matinee and the film The Custodian. Then she would get her first lead role in Gross Misconduct. She was now ready to make the move to Hollywood full time. But her money was dwindling. She had trouble making sure she could cover her rent, but she credits her Aussie pal Nicole Kidman with telling her to never give up. And that's all it took to get her through those dark days. After nine callbacks, she would finally land the role of Jet Girl in the 1995 film Tank Girl. 
Naomi Watts thought this was gonna be her big break, but it was a big box office dud. However, as films like this often do, Tank Girl has gained popularity over the years and is now considered to be a cult classic. Are you a member of the cult? And after Tank Girl did not boost her career like she had thought, once again she was struggling to pay the bills and considered leaving show business altogether. But right when she was about to throw in the towel, she would always land a supporting role in something, and that would keep her going. The films that kept her going were Children of the Corn 4, The Gathering, Persons Unknown, Under the Lighthouse Dancing, Dangerous Beauty, Strange Planet, Down, and she provided additional voices in Babe, Pig in the City. Then, in the year 2001, when Naomi Watts was feeling like her career was going nowhere, she got a call from legendary filmmaker David Lynch, who was looking for an actress for his film Mulholland Drive. David Lynch said that when he met Naomi Watts, he saw someone who had tremendous talent and a beautiful soul. Mulholland Drive made $20 million off a $15 million budget with a very limited theatrical release. Everyone thought Naomi Watts' performance was absolutely mesmerizing. She was nominated for several awards, including the AFI Award for Female Actor of the Year and won Best Actress from the National Society of Film Critics. Mulholland Drive has gone down as one of the greatest films ever made, with the British Broadcasting Network even naming it the greatest film of the 21st century. You're playing a dangerous game here. If you're trying to blackmail me, it's not gonna work. With the critical success of Mulholland Drive, and all that praise heaped upon her performance, Naomi Watts became an overnight sensation. That only took 15 years in the industry. She would then land the lead role in the American remake, The Ring. This spooky horror film would garner positive reviews, and Naomi Watts' performance earned her a Satellite Award for Best Actress. The Ring would also prove to be commercially successful, pulling in $249 million off a $48 million budget. Naomi Watts would then be seen in the British comedy Plots with a View, aka Undertaking Betty. 2003, we would see Watts star opposite Orlando Bloom, Jeffrey Rush, and her future boyfriend Heath Ledger in Ned Kelly. And I believe it was Naomi Watts who convinced Heath Ledger to take the role in Brokeback Mountain. She would then star alongside Kate Hudson in The Divorce. This was another critical and commercial failure for Watts. Her next film was absolutely amazing. It was called 21 Grams, and critics absolutely praised all of the performances involved, which led to Naomi Watts being nominated for several awards, including her first Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. 21 Grams would prove financially successful as well, pulling in 60 million off a $20 million budget. And Naomi Watts is absolutely amazing in this one. She bears her soul and breaks her spirit into a million pieces and you can just see it right there on the screen and it's absolutely incredible. You watch 21 Grams and you're like, oh wow, that that's, that's acting, wow. <laughs> this was followed by some films that did pretty okay with the critics, but did nothing at the box office like the film We Don't Live Here Anymore, and the assassination of Richard Nixon. Then came I Heart Huckabees. It is a film that simply cannot be explained, so I will not explain it. This would be another film where all the performances were given unanimous praise, however it only managed to break even at the box office. But it did show off Naomi's range as an actress. I Heart Naomi in I Heart Huckabees. Then came the year 2005 and she would star and produce Ellie Parker made nothing at the box office. Watts would then return to the world of creepy little girls in The Ring 2. And this horrendous sequel received horrible reviews. It was riddled with horror cliches. Although, of course, it did some decent business, making over 160 million at the box office. Naomi Watts would then do another mind F of a movie. It was called Stay. 
Critics praised the performances of the cast and it made $50 million. Sometimes one big hit can make you forget all of the bombs. And for Naomi Watts, that one big hit would be the Peter Jackson remake of King Kong. She was perfectly cast as the beauty who killed the beast. King Kong would receive positive reviews. It featured state-of-the-art special effects and had a true sense of spectacle while also remaining faithful to the spirit of the 1933 original. And again, like every film with Naomi Watts in it, the critics made sure to specifically point out how great her acting was. She's so good she can act alongside a giant monkey. King Kong cost over $200 million to make, but it managed a worldwide gross of $562.3 million. And this right here is Naomi Watts' highest grossing film. <laughs> After acting in front of Peter Jackson's big, expensive cameras, it was time for her to act in front of David Lynch's tiny, low-resolution cameras. That's right, Naomi Watts would reteam with the legendary filmmaker who turned her into a star, David Lynch, for his experimental film, Inland Empire. Even though all of David Lynch's films are experimental, Critics said that if you already love David Lynch, you're gonna absolutely love this one, and if you already hate David Lynch, then you're gonna absolutely hate this one, which I, I guess can be said about every David Lynch movie. Watts would next star and produce the big screen adaptation of the 1925 novel The Painted Veil, opposite Edward Norton, and this one received mostly positive reviews with everyone heaping praise on the performances and the chemistry between the two leads. And Naomi Watts actually converted to Buddhism because of her experience making this film. Naomi Watts would continue to work with talented filmmakers like David Cronenberg when she made Eastern Promises opposite Viggo Mortensen. Critics found this violent tale of promises from the East to be a solid psychological drama with gritty violence. And of course, they praised all of the acting from all of the actors, calling Naomi Watts' performance touching. On a $50 million budget, it made $56 million at the box office. Then Naomi Watts would be seen in the English language remake, Funny Games. It's about a family being tortured by two yuppie criminals. And it's kind of an absolutely genius film for, you know, for what it is, as is the 1997 Austrian original. Both were written and directed by the same guy, so it's actually kind of interesting to watch a filmmaker remake his own film in English. And the only reason this filmmaker agreed to remake this movie in English was under the condition that Naomi Watts would star. After taking some time off to have a couple of children with Liev Schreiber, Naomi Watts would return to the big screen in 2009 opposite Clive Owen in the action thriller The International. And it didn't make any waves, domestic or international. After a limited release of the film Mother and Child, her next project would be with Woody Allen. It was called You Will Meet a Tall Dark Stranger. This movie received unusually low ratings for a Woody Allen film, with the critics calling it uninspired. However, it did make a small profit. Then she would work with Sean Penn again in Fair Game. Critics found Naomi Watts' performance to be the highlight of this film. Like always, this was followed by Dreamhouse and Clint Eastwood's J. Edgar. Then, in 2012, we would see Naomi Watts give another Oscar-nominated performance, The Impossible, based on a true tsunami survival story. Critics said that this film was propelled by its stellar acting, with Roger Ebert, the guy with the thumbs, giving it a rare four stars, or four thumbs, and calling it one of the best of the year. The Impossible was also a massive financial hit, pulling in nearly 200 million worldwide. And the pain and the suffering and the struggle that Naomi Watts' character has to go through, you watch it and you're like, yeah, only Naomi Watts could do this. She plays the mother to a very young Tom Holland, and you can see right here, that's probably why they cast him as Spider-Man. Naomi Watts would follow up her Academy Award nominated universally praised performance by appearing in Movie 43. 
Some have called this the Citizen Kane of Awful. She would appear alongside her real-life lover, Leave. And yeah, Movie 43 has gone down as one of the worst films ever made. And yeah, just one year after being nominated for an Oscar, she was nominated for a Razzie. Then she would star and executive produce Adore, which is about two lifelong friends who have sexual relations with each other's teenage sons. As a lot of Watts' films, the critics praised the performances, but it seemed like nobody could really get over that plot. Watts would finish up 2013 by starring in two fairly forgettable films, Sunlight Jr., already forgot about it, and Diana, where she played Princess Diana, and of course Naomi Watts gives it her all, but unfortunately even her acting could not save this horribly clumsy script. And she would share her Movie 43 Worst Actress nomination at the Razzies with this film, Diana. Oh, that's not good. Two Razzie nominations at once. Diana! She would then reunite with her 21 Grams director, Alejandro G. Inaritu, I'm so sorry, for Birdman which is seemingly shot like it's one continuous take, and it's pretty amazing. And incredible actress Naomi Watts plays an incredible actress. Birdman would receive overwhelmingly positive reviews, with high praise for all of the acting from everyone involved. This would go on to get nine Oscar nominations that year and win Best Picture. And off an $18 million budget, Birdman made over $100 million. It won an Oscar and made money. Success! This would be followed by some highly praised, somewhat successful indie dramedies, like the movie Saint Vincent, where she would play a Russian prostitute alongside Bill Murray, and the Noah Baumbach film While We're Young. She also took some time to play herself in BoJack Horseman. She would next join the world of young adult movie adaptations with the Divergent series, Insurgent. Critics were very unkind to this dystopian film, saying that it simply doesn't stack up to the other recent young adult adaptations out there. However, this thing still managed to make $300 million. And it had a sequel that left fans without an ending. So sorry, you guys. You'll never find out. Watts would finish 2015 by appearing in three films that failed to ignite the box office. First up was the Gus Van Zandt directed The Sea of Trees alongside Matthew McConaughey. The film premiered at the 2015 Cannes Film Festival where after the film ended it was loudly booed. It's the low point in Gus Van Zandt's career. Her next box office dud would be Demolition opposite Jake Gyllenhaal and Three Generations also bombing at the box office. Watts would next be seen, alongside her on-again, off-again lover, Leave Schreiber, in the biopic Chuck. It's about the real-life boxer who inspired the movie Rocky. However, this very interesting true story didn't do much at the box office. Look at you, like he's your girlfriend. Come on, just push the button. Next up, Naomi Watts would appear in The Book of Henry. This would be another film on Naomi Watts' resume where critics would praise the performances, yet would hate the movie, some even calling it a torture to watch. And off its $10 million budget, it only made $4.6 million at the box office. She would then do what she does best and reunite with David Lynch to take part in the new Twin Peaks. And of course, she's amazing. Now, I suggest you take a good long look at yourselves because I never want to see either of you again. As well as star in the Netflix series Gypsy, which was canceled after just one season. This was followed by the Hamlet-inspired Ophelia and The Glass Castle with Brie Larson. She also did another horror flick, The Shut-In, and joined another ensemble cast in Loose. Also, there was a Son of Sam thriller called The Wolf Hour. And all of these films did so-so, but in all of those movies, nobody had anything bad to say about Naomi Watts. So, uh, that's good, I guess. One of her most recent high-profile gigs came by way of a Showtime miniseries called The Loudest Voice, 
where she gives an absolutely flawless performance in this drama about a Fox News sex scandal. In the year 2020, we would see Naomi Watts star and produce in the big screen adaptation of the book Penguin Bloom. This Australian-based film received eight Australian Academy of Cinema and Television Arts Award nominations, including Best Actress for Naomi Watts. Then in 2021, we would see Naomi Watts star alongside Frank Grillo in Boss Level, a movie that The Daily Beast didn't really like, but I don't know, everybody else I know loves it. It's like Groundhog's Day, but with, like, more guns. It takes that never-ending time loop scenario thing that's been done a few times before and has fun with it. You know, movies can be fun sometimes. Naomi Watts is proof positive that in order to succeed in this world, you must never, ever give up. Because all it takes is one simple thing to turn your entire life around. Like a call from David Lynch. Her performances are always universally praised, oftentimes singled out as the lone bright spot in lackluster films. She is a timeless beauty with infinite, undeniable talent. Whether she's alongside a giant CGI monster or Sean Penn, you know what? Naomi Watts is the boss, and this is her level. Boom. So nobody should give a fuck about what the fuck happened to Naomi Watts. Because she's doing just fine. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all your support.